So hello everyone, today we are sketching this sort of semi-abstract, interesting little magical landscape using just our, our watercolours and a, a fountain pen with some, some uh, waterproof ink. I'd love to know what you think of this, obviously it's um, different and it's um, got that interesting gradient of colour and things running for it, but let me know in the comments, is this the kind of thing you enjoy doing, is it the kind of thing you enjoy looking at? Um, but more importantly, I suppose, let's just um, have a go and, and get sketching. Now this sketch is from the imagination, so the reference I'm using is obviously the sketch itself up in the corner. And I'm going to start by doing a essentially a continuous line drawing which flows across the page. Um, and I'll talk you through the kind of thing I'm trying to capture as I do that, using my Safari Lamy Safari Extra Fine upside down so we get a really fine line. My first sort of aspect I wanted to get was the idea of this kind of dry stone wall like you get in the north of England, there's really lovely moody walls and sometimes they crumble in the middle so let's add a little dip here and just get all those little upright stones which tend to be piled on top of our dry stone walls. We can pop in a couple of trees or bushes in the foreground as well and always just using loose wibbly wobbly lines having a bit of fun and leaving it up to both the imagination but also up to um, us later if we want to move things around and that's what we can do if our lines are nice and loose. I want a, a nice little cottagey, barney house in there. Just really simple shape. You notice the, the slight bend in the roof and that implies a bit of age, a bit of decrepitness, as does the loose line work. I've exaggerated the perspective of the roof there. That's just to, again, add a bit of sort of interest and I don't know, a bit of something, a bit of extra visual interest really. Another tree at the right hand side. And we go back and finish off the wall and then we come out the other way and um, we can finish off the edge of our sketch. Now we can keep the continuous line feel just by starting on another line and then joining things up and adding a few details now so a door maybe a window to each side as well and giving the idea of shape we can also block in some of those dark contrasts that we want to find. Not everything needs to be continuous lines, so on the other side we can just do a couple of little windows and, and have fun with them. And maybe add in some textures, some roof textures here, a few little bricks here and there as well. Just a little bit of something extra to, to grab the eye. Having a, something in the foreground is quite useful as well, something to um, pick out the attention of the viewer, something to play with potentially with our colours later. So here's just a few suggestions of grass or twigs or something, just something in the foreground and they, they're kind of flowing in a, in a direction towards our, our focal point. I also think just providing something, so we, we've got a silhouette at the moment and what I want to do is provide something behind that silhouette um, and in this instance Behind that silhouette is going to be some of these um, twiggy little trees, just branching patterns of dark, um, well, branches. I've said it already. And just take these slowly and just imagine the kind of shapes that you're looking for. And it is just things branching out. One turns into two, turns into another two. Before you know it, you're on the right path. I'm going to use a little brush pen as well, just to get some of those darker areas really nice and bold and standing out for us. Not too much though, and it's very easy with a brush pen to overdo it, to make it too bold, to add too much in. So just a few touches to add a bit more thickness and contrast, dynamism almost, to our, to our little trees. We can use a brush pen to enhance some of our shadows as well, applying a real definite dark line to those dark areas. And that is it, that's all we need to do for our, our line work. Now, um, having put down that brush pen, I need to dry it, so I'll use my hairdryer. 
and really quickly, doesn't take long, just dry off those big black areas of ink. And now we can happily move on to the expressive, fun, interesting bit. Um, we don't need to think too hard here. Um, what I'd love to get is a dreamy little sky, a light sky. So using a size 2 mop brush, I will get a, a sort of cobalty sky, a loose blue sky. I'm going to wash it over the whole image though, not just the sky, but over the whole image. And just watch how the, the cobalt will leave these lovely textures and shapes. And it granulates, um, which leaves lovely texture, as well as just leaving some little hard edges where we don't fully finish off the wash. And that's going to sing through underneath the loose colours we'll add on top. We don't need to do much at all. We can, we can use this cobalt to start enhancing some shadows as well. So in these trees behind the walls, um, just use that cobalt to begin to add some shadows and also maybe a little bit of moon glue. Moon glue adds drama to everything, doesn't it? Wonderful colour, adds this beautiful colour. And I like doing these kind of swirls. So what I do, just a real loose swirl. You see how it starts in the wet and then out here gets into the or the other way around, so it starts in the dry and then it gets into the wet part of the page. And that means you get a hard um, edged circle which then fades and blends in. Now, just need to dry this off quickly again. And I'm just going to dry the, the bit where we're going to be adding more colour. So basically the, the horizon line. And all of that here is now nice and dry, which means we can move on to having a play with some, some silly colours, some fun colours, some colours which bring life and expression and just, you know, whatever we're feeling. This is aiming to be like a mysterious um, landscape or magical landscape, something along those, along those lines. I'm going to start off with a lovely bit of um, magenta and this is quinacridone magenta. It's a lovely sort of warm pinky purple. And I've made things nice and wet and just let's get these colours all flowing down. I want a, a crisp top and then they flow down. Keeping the quinacridone theme. This is quinacridone gold and we'll just again just let this flow down the page. Kind of trying to create a um, different slightly separate rivers of these two colours which then blend and merge together. You can keep moving around with different colours. So now let's try something murky, a perylene violet. Um, and that can come and provide a bit more shadow. It's a similar colour in many ways to the um, to the uh, magenta, but um, also fairly different. Now some green. This is a cascade green, quite a deep green and lovely granulations as well. Great for this kind of work. And we'll pop that and let it move and flow. The important thing here is we're trying to keep things wet. So when we're adding new colours, and in this case a bit of cobalt turquoise and when, when we're adding these colours they flow together they don't just sort of stick in one place and I don't want pretty much don't want any hard edges in except at the top we talked about the hard edge creating that horizon line but below that we don't really want any hard edges at all so working quickly but also being aware when things are drying up and just coming back and adding a bit of water and already you can see amazing textures and things developing and I just want to keep promoting that development really so touching in now a bit of moon glow and cobalt and um, again two very granulating colors which will create really interesting textures all on their own and we can use them again for shadows and this is the semi-abstract nature of this painting we've got abstract colors but we're also applying shadows in places we expect shadows and that makes it understandable to to look at it's not just totally mad it's also got some of the things we're expecting to see. Can have a bit of fun. If we really clean our brush off and dry it a little bit, we can just tap some water in there. And you can hopefully immediately see you start to get these negative cauliflowers there where I'm pointing. These sort of areas where the water is pushing out and moving the pigment away. We can then come in and do the opposite and touch in some, in this case, cobalt blue around where that that pigment's being pushed away, creating an even harsher, bigger contrast. And just move those pigments, make sure they're wet, make sure they're not creating hard lines, but it being wet and wet, nice and soft. 
and again just find where things look a bit flat and touch in some colour, touch in ever stronger colours and try perhaps the opposite. So here I'm trying to pull up some colour, clean brush and just pull out shapes and pull out textures and reveal some of the colours which are underneath the top layer. What we're trying to do is just have a little look around and find places which need a, a little touch up, need something extra, perhaps do some splashes to create even more interesting textures. And some of these splashes will be um, sort of laminated on top. They'll be sort of hard edges if you like. Um, but again, that's okay. And it's, it's creating a really interesting visual experience. That's all I'm going to do for now. Now I need it to dry off a bit and then we'll see what happens um, in the next phase, which you might find a little more controversial. So here we are, nice and dry, as you can see, touch dry. And okay, it might be overselling it to call it a bit controversial, but whenever I do this little extra bit of framing, people always say, I love it or I hate it. Um, and I'm here to experiment so that you don't have to. So tell me, what do you think about this kind of framing of of your watercolours. So I'm going around just trying to capture the outside of where these random colours have gone. Sometimes moving away from the outside and sometimes sticking closely to it. And that just gives this, for me, it gives a lovely like visual demonstration of where the painting is. I think it's a really lovely technique to use in a sketchbook. Um, in the sky we're going to move up, capture some white, but also try and come down and just touch, say on this crescent of colour, we touch and come round and we show that the frame is in somehow connected to what we've done. And there you go, that is that is how I sometimes like framing, especially my sketchbook images. Um, another thing we could try is just embolden some of the horizon lines. So we go over the top, just a nice little continuous line, and just pick out that horizon line, neaten it up a little bit, recapture some of those interesting colours. And um, again, you, you may you may prefer it when it's just uh, had that delicate horizon line but again experimenting here so that you don't have to and that's us done so tell me what you think let me know if you enjoy this kind of thing let me know in the comments and do like and subscribe so i can bring you more things like this if if that's what you enjoy and um, hope you have a good rest of your days and uh, happy sketching <laughs>